receive the blessing. And now go forth in peace and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of you. Amen.
morning. Welcome everyone to the Horse Edge United Methodist Church. We're running about an hour late because of some technical difficulties. For whatever reason, we couldn't get online. We've paid our bills, but we just couldn't get online. And so we've decided we will do the service again. In addition to being Thanksgiving Sunday, it's also Christ the King Sunday. It's the final Sunday in the Christian year. Next Sunday begins a new year with Advent. Today, after the entire cycle of Christian teachings, we declare and celebrate Christ to be King in our lives. I think that the two themes go well with each other, Christ the King and Thanksgiving, because we're giving thanks to God, not just for our material blessings, but for our spiritual blessings as well especially that Jesus is our Savior and Christ is King in our lives. Our worship center, as you can see, is centered on Thanksgiving this morning. Just as God led the pilgrims, so God leads us today and continues to strengthen us in these days, providing us the firm foundation of Ten Commandments and the love and grace of Jesus Christ. The flowers this morning are given in honor of Jean Paul by her family. And over here in our home worship center, your worship center at home will likely change too after Thanksgiving. And I'd like to just show you how you can make a, an Advent wreath. I simply went to the craft store and bought a styrofoam ring and a small wreath. But you know, you could use any candles that you have and any greenery that you might cut from outdoors. If you have little children, you might want to use this sort of candle, the tea lights, artificial tea lights, and construction paper, perhaps. Because we won't be able to have our regular lesson and carol service, and because we won't be able to have an in-person Christmas Eve service, we've packaged up five candles with a length of ribbon, and if you'd like, you can stop here at the church and pick some up during regular office hours. If you can't make it here between 9.30 and 2 on any day of the week, be sure to give Sandy a call in the office, and we'll arrange a time when one of us can come over and let you in. It is a joy to be with you all this morning on Thanksgiving Sunday. Let's begin our time of worship. Let's join in our call to worship. 
Abundance everywhere, God's creation overflowing with wonder, the crunch of leaves, a delicate spider's web sparkling with morning dew, cool, fresh air on a late November afternoon, a crisp apple and the smell of pumpkin pie, a warm sweater and a tender embrace, God's love and grace, lavish, abundant, and ever-present, a sense of God's presence in quiet moments of prayer, a deep joy in the midst of a song, God's blessings, what a rich harvest your goodness provides. But remember the Lord your God. Don't forget. What do you do when you want to remember something? How do you jog your memory? For instance, this past week it was late and I remembered that I needed to do something the next day or I'd miss a deadline. So I jotted myself a note and I stuck it on the bathroom mirror. Our call to prayer from Deuteronomy 8 is a sticky note from God telling the people that in this rich land they live in not to forget what God has done for them. Specifically, God has rescued them out of slavery, formed them in the wilderness, and in time led them into a, a wonderful land full of natural resources. And it's not by their own power, but through God's covenant with them that they have the strength to prosper. For in God we live and move and have our being. Reading from Deuteronomy 8, verses 7 through 18. The Lord your God is bringing you into a fertile land, a land that has rivers and springs and underground streams gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land that produces wheat and barley, grapes, figs, pomegranates, olives, and honey. There you will never go hungry or ever be in need. Its rocks have iron in them, and from its hills you can mine copper. You will have all you want to eat, and you will give thanks to the Lord your God for the fertile land that he has given you. Make certain that you don't forget the Lord your God. Do not fail to obey any of his laws that I'm giving you today. When you have all you want to eat and have built good houses to live in, and when your cattle and sheep, your silver and gold, and all your other possessions have increased, make sure that you do not become proud and forget the Lord your God who rescued you, rescued you from Egypt where you were slaves. He led you through that vast and terrifying desert where there were poisonous snakes and scorpions. In that dry and waterless land, he made water flow out of solid rock for you. In the desert, he gave you manna to eat, food that your ancestors had never eaten. He sent hardships on you to test you so that in the end he could bless you with good things. So then you must never think that you have made yourselves wealthy by your own power and strength. Remember that it is the Lord your God who gives you the power to become rich. He does this because he is still faithful today to the covenant that he made with your ancestors. On this Thanksgiving, in the midst of unprecedented times, it reminds us as well to remember from where we have come, 
the troubles and challenges we've faced in the past and recently. And while all might not be hunky-dory, we're here today and we have hope. To give thanks for health and strength and daily food as the blessing goes for the freedoms that we have, for family and friends, for modern technology and medicine. To praise God's name for the strength to be prosperous and for all that we've been given and to not take God and the blessings we have for granted. Let us pray together. Wondrous and generous God, you have blessed us in so many ways, and yet we worry. Release us, Holy One, from anxiety and fear. Create in us a contagiously resilient spirit that mirrors your light and inspires the world with hope. Loving God, lead us to a deeper sense of gratitude and a growing trust in your ability to provide. May we come to know the blessings of giving with joy loving without conditions, and sharing our abundance even in the midst of this pandemic. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. We have several concerns for prayer this morning. Please remember Margot Jensen on the passing of her brother, Alan and also sympathy to the family and friends of Geraldine Gray. We pray for Joan Ostrander and her husband. She's in quarantine and he's tested positive. We also pray for the Harveys. Barb is home from the hospital, but very weak. We have prayers for Marlene Lunner, for Kenny and Brittany Howarth. We also pray for Lance Muir, for Paul Wills after knee surgery, and for all our family and friends who are somewhat isolated in care and nursing homes. Let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> He's given Jesus Christ, his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son. Strong. 
we think about the holiday. People think of different things, like turkey, families, and even football. Another is the cornucopia, which is sometimes called the horn of plenty. It symbolized farmers being fortunate to have plenty of food harvested to last the winter. Now it reminds us of our many blessings. I am grateful for the farmers, truckers, grocery store workers, and all who make our dinners possible. I am thankful for family and friends. Celebrations may be different this year as many people are staying home and not traveling. Some may be connecting with loved ones over the computer or by phone. It is important that we remember to give thanks for what we do and not what we can't do. God blesses us each day, and as you gather this Thanksgiving, give thanks. Dear God, as we celebrate this Thanksgiving, help us to give thanks for our many blessings. Help us to focus the good in the, on the good in the world and let your light shine through us. May we live with grateful and loving hearts each day. Amen.
Paul's letter to the believers in Ephesus begins with a rather impressive 14-verse sentence. In Greek, it's a single sentence, praising and blessing God. And then in verse 15, where we pick up the reading, Paul's prayer turns to giving thanks appropriate for today. He thanks God for us, for those reading the letter. He appeals to God to give us the Spirit, the Spirit who will make us wise and reveal God to us so that we gain a deeper understanding. Listen to Paul's words. I'm reading from today's English version. For this reason, ever since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I've not stopped giving thanks to God for you. I remember you in my prayers and ask the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, to give you the Spirit who will make you wise and reveal God to you so that you will know him. I ask that your minds may be open to see his light so that you will know what is the hope to which he's called you, how rich are the wonderful blessings he promises his people, and how very great is his power at work in us who believe. This power working in us is the same as the mighty strength which he used when he raised Christ from death and seated him at his right side in the heavenly world. Christ rules there above all heavenly rulers, authorities, powers, and lords. He has a title superior to all titles of authority in this world and in the next. God put all things under Christ's feet and gave him to the church as supreme Lord over all things. The church is Christ's body, the completion of him who himself completes all things everywhere. Thanks be to the Lord for this his word to us, God's people in today's world. At my house, there's a small black dog named Pip. He's a cross between a Shih Tzu and a Poodle, who in addition to keeping me company, playing fetch and making me laugh, always wants to be patted. He just can't get enough. He'll come along and bump my hand as if to say, pet me one more time. Some days, like that little dog, I just need to hear the gospel story one more time. Be told what I already know, what I've already heard so many times. But to hear that reassuring word one more time. I guess it's like the old hymn, I love to tell the story. But I also love to hear the story because I know it's true. It satisfies my longing as nothing else can do. And in these days, we need all the reassuring love of God we can get. In Paul's prayer, he does just that for us. He tells the old, old story of Jesus and his love one more time. But he does it in words that if we're open to them, they deepen and broaden our understanding and by so doing, empower us. To help us get the picture, let's take a moment and consider our own answer to this question. What is a sight, a sound, or a thought that takes your breath away? Could it be the sight of the Grand Canyon? Or perhaps the sight of your own child sleeping? Might it be the sound of the Alleluia Chorus? Or the pure tone of a single voice? Or could it be the thought of the immensity of creation or a grace so amazing 
that it can save even a wretch like you and me. What Paul describes here in these verses is a God of power that takes the breath away, saying how rich the blessings, how great the power, how amazing the hope. And he wants us to experience these so fully that we never lose track of who God is. Not even in this pandemic, in the oddest holidays we've ever experienced. He wants us to keep growing in faith, coming to know more and more of our Lord. The part which intrigued me is where he tells us about the power of God working in us, describing what it is. In verses 19b and 20, he says, the power working in us is the same as the mighty strength which he used when he raised Christ from death and seated him at his right side in the heavenly world. That is a power that takes our breath away, power over death, a mighty strength beyond our comprehension. We can only stand speechless in its presence. Paul prays that our minds might be open to see Christ's light so that we can begin to know the hope to which we're called, the rich blessings he promises us, and the immeasurable greatness of his power at work in us who believe. Think you have a habit that can't be broken, a sin that can't be forgiven? Think again, with God's power working in us and the light of Christ cleansing our hearts, what's impossible for human strength falls before God's strength. It's as though we believers have been given the biggest diamond in the world, the hope diamond. But we don't quite know we've got it yet. Paul's hope is that our eyes would be open to that blaze of light, to all the colors of the rainbow enlightening our lives, and that we would live in the hope and the riches we've been given and become effective as his body, the church. We are blessed with the amazing power of God's love in our lives, a love which can change us and all the world around us. It's up to us. That diamond is ours if we'll but receive it. Work with it, letting the light of Christ shine in us and through us. One way we do that is to take the challenge of the circumstances that we find ourselves in and remember who and whose we are. That we are sons of light and daughters of day. We are the children of God. Who we are is what we make of the circumstances we find ourselves in. For truly this is the day the Lord has made. Who I am is what I do with it. We heard these words from Sylvia Joran last Sunday. And today in our scripture, we hear Paul praying for us, reassuring us, telling us that we have the strength to do great things. We can grow and change. We can meet the challenges of this day if we but open our minds to the light of Christ. How is that done, you ask? It's through prayer, through simply talking to God. For some, that sounds way too simple. For them, we find guidance in a paraphrase of a Bible story. It's about an important military man who balked when he was told to go and wash in the muddy local river to rid himself of his leprosy. He was advised by his faithful servant Sir, if it were difficult, you would move mountains to do it. This is simple. Why not try it? He did, and he was healed. And for others, if this sounds too hard, they fear they haven't the right words to pray with, 
Don't worry about it, we're told in Scripture. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. Prayer. It's not too simple and it's not too hard. If we would know the hope to which we're called, the rich blessings that God promises and how very great his power is that is at work in us, well, we might post a note on our mirror to remind us, to remind us to talk to God, tell him what's on your mind, ask her for guidance, give thanks for your blessings. Pray for God's light in your life and the strength and awareness of how to better act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly as you love God, yourself, and your neighbors. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we come to this Thanksgiving time of year, to this Christ the King Sunday aware of all the things that are different around us, but you, Lord, are unchanging. You, Lord, hold us in your care. Help us, Lord, to take that blessing you have for us and to walk in your strength. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> now receive the benediction. May the God of all grace, who's called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may indeed live in grace and peace. Amen.